Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Joe. We're going to spend 24 hours in the woods today out of a Maxpedition Xantha backpack. Stay tuned. Well, there goes my ride. I'll be here for the next 24 hours. Bye, sweetie. It's a little late in the year for them, but still a few mulberries hanging on. I'm going to grab a couple of these guys on the way in. Try and supplement my food with them. Got a handful. Mm. One of my favorite edibles, favorite wild edibles. I want to find some blackberries. I want to get in the woods and set up my camp too. Let's do that. These snake tongues on uh, grapevine, they're also edible. Very tart, but edible. I actually quite like them. If I can keep going, finding little bits of stuff like this to help get me through the day, I'm going to try and catch some fish too, so we'll see. So I'm about to cut off the trail here into the woods. I'm just going to deep myself all up. Got to love it. The, uh, the deer flies are coming out too, so Try and keep them off me. I'm gonna get wet, it looks like. Oh, there's a crayfish I can grab. Oh, I gotta come back to this spot. dead crayfish there and I saw one as I was crossing as well so if I can come back to this area a little bit later I can grab some crayfish for tonight to hopefully go along with my bluegill or my bass bonus so here's the deal I got dropped off I don't know half an hour ago it was right around 10 in the morning July 20th maybe anyways um, walked in for about a half an hour here. I'm at one of my old shelters. I'll show you in a minute. And I had planned on setting up right around here because there's a nice opening and uh, I get a little bit more light here for filming. But since I've not been here in a long time, it's been overrun by people. And there's garbage and trash and fires and stuff everywhere. So I don't want to hang around this cesspool of dank. So I'm going to keep on walking through the wood, through the mosquito infested woods. Uh, to try and find a spot to set up and uh, first order of business is going to get a fire going I'm, I'm getting eaten alive here so before anything I'm going to get a fire going I don't know why I'm still talking let's go here's my rundown old shelter uh, it's been it's been populated for sure but uh, that's to be expected I imagine So these are all leeks. These are another wild edible. You've seen me use these before. I can, uh, I brought a steak for supper. I'm hoping to get some fish for lunch, but I can put these with my steak and make a nice meal. Um, easily spotted now by the flowering tops. And they're pretty green. The leeks themselves down there are pretty green, but uh, they'll still be good. So I'm gonna leave these here for now. I wanna find my camp and come back to them because I need to get a fire going. So it looks like I found camp. The reason I picked this spot is because there's a little bit of sunlight coming through as you can see. The ground behind me is relatively clear of debris and I have this awesome beech tree where I can hang my uh, ridge line for my, my tarp. Before I start making a fire, I just, I'm gonna clear the ground, the whole ground where my camp is gonna be, where my tent is, where my fire is gonna be. Uh, all that stuff so that I don't have to run around after the fire is going trying to move stuff out of the way so I don't catch the woods on fire. It is summer, right? The ground's damp, but the leaves are dry, so I'm just going to clear everything. 
Make it as safe as possible. I disturbed this little guy. Little toady guy. Oh, there he goes. Alright, there's a little change of plans now. I'm not sure if it's because I'm not walking around the woods anymore tramping him up. Or I'm just gotten used to it or what, but the mosquitoes seem to have died down a little bit. I'm not not kind of much of a rush to get my fire going now. So I think I'm going to hang my tarp up from this tree, get my tent squared away and everything, and uh, then maybe start looking for some firewood because as of right now, the mosquitoes seem to have gone away. Bonus. Paracord. You know, bite nice big long hank of it to get up there. Tie a couple overhand knots, nothing fancy. And huck this bad boy over the tree. I'm not going to go over everything that I have with me in my bag. That's uh, I did a previous video about it. If you want, you can check that out. I'll put the link at the bottom. But right now I'm using my Bushcraft Outfitters 10x10. I'm going to rig it up to this beech tree. Oh, this thing still smells of smoke. It's awesome. This tie-out is the very middle tie-out on the whole tarp. And I'm just going to tie it on real quick. And that'll hold her. Now we got to hoist it up. Maybe right there for now, and then it'll take some tweaking for sure. I've tied. Uh, top line hitches on each of them, on each of the four uh, trees, so that I can adjust it if need be, if it starts to sag later on tonight. There we go. Nice. That looks really good. I'm happy with that. So I've got my shade up and my protection from rain if it happens. Got a nice, nice area where I can put my tent underneath this and be protected if it does start to come uh, rain down on me. I put the tarp up that high for a reason. I, I don't want it down close to me because I want to be able to have a fire, not necessarily underneath it, but close to it, um, which isn't really a big deal either way, but I want the airflow coming through, right? So I brought my tent, my big Agnes tent, without the, uh, the rain fly on it because I know that in, in this temperature, it's like 89 degrees right now Fahrenheit, it's super hot. Um, when I go to bed, it's still gonna be hot. And that, the, the, whole, the whole top of the, the tent is screen. But when I put that, that rain file on it, it just all becomes like compact in, and I'm gonna sweat my uh, heart out, for lack of a better word, um, with, with, the, with the fly on. So this gives me protection from rain, and it gives me air ventilation, and just a nice cool place to work under. Right underneath my tarp here, I found this punk wood. You can tell it's punk wood. It's it's uh, it's moist as well, and I'm gonna keep that because that's gonna come in into play later on for keeping those mosquitoes away. So the walk in took me about an hour to get into the spot. The backpack held fine. It rode fine. I weighed it before I left. I got 30 pounds in there. I stocked up on three liters of water and a couple other things that, that weren't in my original video. Um, just to make it ride a little bit better, or sorry, to, to test how it would ride with more weight in it. I think at the last video it was right around 20 pounds, so I threw a, a few more things in. And it rode fine. The internal frame is good to go in my opinion. Um, 
and the space is good because I was able it was already full and I was able to fit like another 10 pounds worth of gear in there so be uh, water being being most of it but anyways uh, set up the old tent So there's the tent all squared away. That's good that that's done. I've got all these extra bags that my tarp, my tent poles, my tent were in and all that. I just want to put them all inside each other and put them back in my backpack because you know, you don't want to lose things when you're out in the woods. <laughs> it's no fun. So other things I have to put up would be my hammock, which I'm in no rush. But I do want to throw my pillow, my sleeping bag, and my sleeping pad in my tent right now. I'll let them just rest in my tent while I go about my business. So I just hung this little uh, piece of paracord up for a gear rack and you know how you can like flip things inside each other, uh, like the rope inside each other to hold it. Well, this is too big for that, but if you just grab a little stick and you fold it around once, throw that stick through and pull it down, it's gonna hold it. This is just like my possible bag with like a bug net and some fishing kit and shamog and stuff in it but I've got a, that, my hammock there I'm gonna do with that that bit got it gonna admit I'm gonna do that with my hammock too so everything's all set up I got a few more things I want to do like uh, get some firewood and whatnot but it's getting close to lunchtime and I didn't bring any lunch I brought a supper I brought a steak to eat and I'm gonna supplement it with whatever I can find but I brought a little fishing kit all this it has is two bobbers like three or four hooks and some line. So I gotta, I'm gonna roam around, look for some worms, dig up some worms in the woods before I head over to the pond because it's easier to find the worms here in the woods. Uh, I'm not gonna bring my DSLR, I will bring my little GoPro and we'll see if I can get a bluegill or two. Maybe a crayfish. Come on, wormies. I'm gonna have to find a bigger log. Come on. Oh, there's one by this garbage. Ducked into his hole, but I saw him. Come on. There he is. All right, one down, like a million to go. All right, score, check out this fatty like 10 times the size of the other one I got be good very good so I'm gonna head out now out of the woods walk down the trail to the pond and we'll see see if I have any luck it's not prime fishing time that's for sure it's way too late in the day for that but this is the time I had to get out here and set up my stuff I didn't want to walk all the way down into the pond with all my gear and try and fish and then if I was lucky, I'd have to bring the fish back with my gear and set it all up and let it sit out in the sun and stuff. So everything's all set up and let's we'll see if you have any luck. Yeah, there's crayfish in here for sure. I gotta get across. It's gonna get a little bit wet, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
What is that? What is that? Oh, a little toad. He urinated all over me. Oh, there you go, buddy. Go on. Climb up this mess now. Easy walking for a minute now. Yeah. So, full disclosure. Where I live is very, very populated. There are not very many places that I can go to the woods and have the freedom to do what I want to do. Where I am now is one of those places probably the only place that I know of around here. I'm walking on an old farm road right now and truth be told I just passed a farmer on his tractor. I don't want anybody to think that I'm in the middle of the wilderness here because that's just not the case. Um, in a few days I am going up on a canoe trip with three other buddies and we will be out in the wilderness and I've done that and you guys have seen that on my videos and stuff but this this is an overnighter near my house where I can get to within an hour and just be able to relax and do my thing. So that's why you see me walking on a road here. Well, the old fishing hole is not being so kind to me today. I'm gonna move spots down here. There's been beaver that moved in and they're kind of changing the topography of the pond. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it. It could just be me sucking at life, but we'll see. Like I said, it's not the right time of day for this anyways, but I should get a bite or two at least. Here, a bullfrog. See the, uh, we never used to have beaver down here. I'm sure we did years and years ago, but there's a beaver lodge there and they've taken down the trees across, the big fat cottonwoods across. I don't know if you can pick it up on the GoPro, but definitely the pond has changed. Oh man, there's a huge snapping turtle. Oh my goodness. Oh, he's huge. Let me see if I can get close to him. Be very, very quiet. We're hunting snapping turtles. log. There he goes. <laughs> Pretty sizable little snapper there for sure. That's cool. I'm glad to see the wildlife returning. This area has been decimated by, by pollution and just overpopulation and stuff. So seeing the seeing the, the, the evidence of beaver, seeing the snapping turtle, and hearing the frogs. It's all a plus in my book, even if I don't catch any fish. Pretty cool. Now, I think this might be a lost cause. I'm not getting any bites. And uh, I've been out here for an hour, so maybe I'll make my way back in. Back into the bush. Maybe I'll try and collect some wild edibles along the way to get me through to, until supper. So I've got a Queen Anne's lace here. And I'm going to follow it to the bottom and try and dig up the root. Because it's just like wild carrot. It is a wild carrot. We can get a few of those and maybe some other things I'll be looking up. That was a lot easier than I expected. So two, I got two for the price of one there. Not too shabby. So there's obviously no need to take them back the whole, uh, take them back whole. So I'm just gonna cut the carrot part off and uh, bring it back like that. Oh yeah, there's no mistake in that. That's, that's wild carrot for sure. It smells exactly like an orange carrot you'd buy at the store or grow yourself. 
Nice. I got a, I brought my bug mask, my bug net with me to use as a, like a collection bag. So in those go and hopefully I find quite a few more wild edibles on the way back. And I don't know if this puddle goes all the way into the pond or not, but I saw, oh yeah, it goes all the way in. I saw a frog jump in there. No, he's gone. Weak. Score. Uh, this is bull, bull thistle. So I can actually eat the stalk of this. And now it's got all these uh, spikes on it, but I can clean them off and then the stalk will be just like celery. So I'm gonna get that done and put that into my little pouch too. So this, this day just keeps getting better and better. I have found some apples. I'm sure they might be a touch bitter, but I'm gonna eat them anyways. Oh, there looks like a good one up there. See those three right there? Here's another useful, very useful plant, uh, common plantain. So the leaves are good for a whole lot of things, but I'm gonna use them to put on my mosquito bites later on tonight. So you make a poultice out of it, mash it up pretty good, apply it to a wound or whatever, and it's supposed to help a lot. It does help. I got a really bad bee sting one time in New York and um, these help, so these are going in the bag as well. Man, this has been a productive little walk even though I haven't got any fish. So I found what I was looking for, and it's wild asparagus, or as my daughter calls it, spagarius. But, you can see it here, but those are huge. Those are woody already. I, I can't eat that, I know it. That's, that's way too tough. Um, the stalks are bigger than my thumb there is another one where is it here it's a bit smaller maybe i can eat something up higher on it it all still feels really really woody i don't know i'll take a piece back with me and cook it and see but i don't have high hopes for that i think you got to get that stuff early on when it's young I don't know if you can appreciate how big that is, but the top of the Queen Anne's lace is probably the size of a, almost a baseball. And that bee or wasp or whatever that thing is, is huge. Wow. Man, I've never seen something like that. She's big. Wow, I'm gonna leave that guy alone, I think. There's something here. It's either a frog or a crayfish. I think it's a little froggy. I'm not gonna eat him if it is. He's too small, but let's see if I can get him. Yep. <laughs> see if I can find some crayfish though. There's a little baby, baby one. He's dead. Hmm. I gotta be able to find some crayfish I can eat. I'm sure of it. I'm just trying to be slow and see if there's any any moving around. It, the, the bad thing is the, the water clouds up as soon as you move whatever. But that's what they like to hide under. Debris in the water. We'll keep looking. Here, crayfish, 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 crayfish. There's all these um, patterns in the mud. I don't know what they're from. I've seen raccoon prints and all these and a bunch of holes. Again, another dead crayfish. Hmm. Maybe the raccoons are having a heyday on the crayfish around here. No luck. That's all right. Maybe I'll come back after, we'll see. I'm not too, not too worried about it. I got a bag full of veggies I can eat, so. It'd be nice to catch one. I think I've scared them all off in this spot though, and I gotta find a different spot where I can actually access the water a little bit better. Up into the woods we go, into mosquito land, but that's good because then there's shade and I don't have to worry about this heat anymore. Get a little bit warm. 
find our camp again, hopefully. Now I'll talk about a site for sore eyes. I am glad to be back at camp. I'm gonna get a fire going and grub some of this wild edibles. No more mosquitoes. All right, time to check out my booty, my bounty. I still have to remove the spines from the bull thistle. There's my plantain. I found some actual uh, smaller spagarius. <laughs> Stuff that actually smells like asparagus and might might be edible, so ah, so we'll try that out. Just got a thorn in the finger. Try and dump this all out. Of course, the the bull thistle is getting stuck because of the spines, but we'll get that big piece out after. So yeah, I'm excited. These apples won't be too bad. These uh, the wild carrot. I'm going to cook as well because they're a little bit bigger and probably tough. So I'm going to cook those with my supper. Put those aside. So I'm going to have the uh, bull thistle and some apples right now. And we'll see how that goes. I shaved it all off. I didn't just use the back of my knife and do it. I actually uh, actually cut off the spines because I found that the outer skin was coming off with it. And I think that's better. So let's see how it works out. Mmm. Horrible. Woody. These might be a bit old too. Tastes of celery ish. What? That's not going down too good. It'd be good and fibery. <laughs> so the bull thistle wasn't uh, wasn't a home run. Let's try the apple. I'm guessing it's gonna be so bitter. That's not that bad. I can handle that. So, I've got a little bit of asparagus and three apples to eat for lunch, and that'll be fine, because I have the steak for dinner. Surprisingly, uh, I found out that the wild carrot is my favorite. And I found one that's skinny enough that I didn't have to cook the whole thing. This one, it is skinnier, way skinnier. Whatever. It's skinny. It's the skinniest one I have. But it's not too woody, and it tastes super good, like a carrot. So I'm much on this one. I like it. I like it a lot. So I've decided I want to make myself a chair. I brought out a little piece of material to go with the bush chair. So I'm just going to do a few wraps, actually one wrap, a couple fraps, and call it good because it didn't take much to support my 100 pound frame. <laughs> so I'm just going to make a tripod, basic tripod out of this, and um, that's it. Super easy stuff. Just tie it off. Doesn't need to be anything fancy. Good. So this chair, my friend Kyle made uh, this part of it anyway, the sill nylon. Just sewed it up together. It's basically a big bag with a sleeve sewn in the bottom so you can run a, a log through it. And then those two sides are going to get tied up with paracord on, on the tripod. And then I got my chair, my old bush chair. I've already got the one side tied on. Figured I'd show you what I do. It's, it's nothing special. You wrap it a few times and do an overhand knot and that's it. That's enough to hold it. Maybe if you want to do a little granny knot on top, you can. 
but that ain't going nowhere. Man. This cross piece, I had to get a different piece. It's basswood, so it might break on me. It's pretty, pretty soft. There we go. Yeah. A little spring to it. Not too shabby. Whatever kind of break I was getting from those mosquitoes, I think they decided that's enough because they are swarming like crazy. So now I do have to get a fire going. So my silky saw, my 20 inch Sandvik, and I'm going to go process some wood. So we got a dead oak here. Um, I have my silky saw, but this ax is kind of new to me. So I'm gonna use my ax to take her down. It's a small ax, but it's a small tree, so it's no big deal. Just gonna clean up the site around here a bit. moved my chair over to the side <clears throat> because I didn't have a good fire area. Uh, my chair was taking it up, so no big deal. I just moved it off to the side. I can sit beside my, my tent um, when I'm having the fire. And it's, the fire's gonna be far enough away from my tent that I don't have to worry about sparks or anything. And I'm not planning on having a rip roar. I'm planning on getting a smoky fire going, getting a good base of coals. That way when it comes time to cook my steak, I can. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not worried about burning a hole in my tent. I might have been wrong about this being oak. I think it's maple. But both very, very good woods to cook on. Red oak is my favorite. Red oak is my favorite wood ever. It's just so straight grain. I want to make a split wood fire, you look for red oak, man, I'm telling you. And we have an abundance of it here. It's a huge tree, grows really, really, really big, gets old, so red oak, man. Wow, that's dense. Yeah, it's maple. It's maple for sure. You can tell by the color of the wood. stuff man let me tell you got about a million and one mosquito bites already need to get this thing going oh. there's a pretty sweet little axe I haven't really used it too much before today. Okay, fire. We need a fire. Okay, my tinder is just some crappy feather sticks with better feather sticks on top of it. I'm just trying to get this thing going quick because I'm dying here. These mosquitoes are absolutely nuts today, right now at least. So, I'm gonna get this going with the flare steel. I'm gonna put my knife and my fire steel away this time. 
Maybe I'll be able to survive the night. There we go. Bam! Almost like I knew what I was doing or something. Oh yes, yeah. smoky, smoky fire. This is what I want. The mosquitoes have been giving me no relief in the past hour or so. Pretty much ever since I came back from my failed fishing attempt. This is good. This is exactly what I needed. Yes. I'm actually not too hungry. I don't really want to eat until maybe six. But while this fire is going, I want to go around and pick up some punk wood and some old mushrooms and stuff like that to get smoldery uh, fires going around my camp. I didn't have to walk far to find any. This old rotted stump give me a lot of good stuff. I could even dig at it with my axe, but I don't, I don't even think I need to. Yeah. One stop shop. So I'm just gonna toss it on right now. Try and lay it across so I don't lose it all. Let it burn for a minute. Grab my gloves, pick it out of there. You could use a stick too, but my gloves are leather, so that's what I'm gonna use. And then I'm gonna place it, see how much smoke already? And then I'm gonna place it around my camp. Call it good. So I need to go get better punk wood. The punk wood sucked, I burned it a bit too long, whatever. Um, I like sassafras for punk wood, and that's where I'm going. Get me some sassafras. telling you guys blue foam pad all the way this is a uh, cut up piece of a child's puzzle floor like a foam floor that you would get you got like I could get three pieces this size out of one puzzle piece Okay, well, that was relaxing, but there's work that needs to be done. So, my little punk wood fire went out. My other bigger fire needs wood. I need to go get one green sapling, uh, probably maple, so that I can use that for a pot hook and um, a spit over the fire and to hold my steak. So, as much as I'd like to just relax in the hammock right now, I know I'm going to be hungry soon, and uh, that stuff needs to be done already, so. 
firewood, green maple, steak. So I've got my green maple, I've already got it cut up into pieces that I need. These two pieces are going to be stakes into the ground, and I left a bunch of different hooks for different lengths or whatever. And this piece is going to be my spit, I'm going to split it, sandwich the steak in there, and hopefully wrap the end off with mulberry bark, we're going to see how that works. I need the split to run about halfway through it, so I'm starting at the thicker end. Pretty good. I'm starting to run to the one side, but I'm pretty pleased with that. Okay, I gotta stop there. It's splitting off. So if I can get my steak in this part and clamp this together with the uh, willow bark, we're laughing. Okay, so it should work. Should be able to wrap that with this stuff. It's pretty tough. Nice. Got to do that to a few more pieces. So we got a New York strip today. Uh, price of beef has gone up like crazy. This is over $10 for this piece, but it's worth it. I got the Montreal steak spice. You know I got to do that. Masher in there all good. Time for the moment of truth. We're gonna see if this mulberry bark works or not. Looks good.
Yeah. Cool. All natural. Nice. Yeah, that'll be perfect. I can't even leave my hand there. That high. Nice. Nice. So the backpack, Maxpedition Xantha. The whole reason we came out to do this overnighter. Half the reason. Um, I like it, it's a good bag. It's done, it's allowed me to be comfortable out here. I could have got away with a Shemog and a Tomahawk, but I'd be eaten alive by bugs at night. That's no fun. I, won't, I wanna come out, I wanna have fun. Um, and this bag helped me do that. I was able to fit everything in it. Uh, it's tough. This is going to be my bushcrafty overnight bag kit. Um, so everything will fit inside this that I need. I could stay, I could stay two, three, four days out here. The only difference is the amount of water. And if it's really that bad, I can go down to the pond and get it. I just don't like drinking out of the pond because it's um, farm runoff and it's just kind of dodgy. But yeah, the pack. It's a good pack, man. Uh, what can I say? I like it. I'm, I'm glad to have it. I will use it in the future. I will use this as my overnight bushcraft pack, like I said. Uh, it's robust. I'm happy with it. I do have a few things that I said I would like changed, um, but I'm not going to go over that again. That was in the first video. Uh, if you haven't watched it, I go over every piece of gear that I have out here, with the exception of like a couple, and my initial thoughts on it, a little bit of specs on it and stuff. So go on and check that video out. But uh, Max Edition Xantha, it's good in my book. took my carrots out. They're kind of hard. But we're going to try them out anyway. While my steak's cooking. Oh wow. They taste like really good but the... Oh it's too woody. It tastes like a parsnip, actually, not more than a carrot, but it's it's too woody, way too woody. I shouldn't have cooked them. The one I was eating, the small one I was eating before I cooked it, was okay. It was a little little woody, but nothing like that. Oh well, steak. And I forgot, I forgot to go get leeks, wild leeks. I might go do that right now when my steak's cooking. So I just got back, I went and grabbed two leeks. So like I showed you earlier, this is what they look like uh, in the summer after they've peaked. They're already putting their flower head out. So I'm just cleaning off the dirt and I'm gonna leave them on the stalks and just drape them over uh, the coals like next to the stake. They're pretty good. So I'm calling her done. She's cooked perfectly. Uh, right near the end, I, I, I lowered the stake down and I fanned the flames to get the fire going a bit. I put some more wood on, just to get a little bit of flame kissed on it, but I'm sure she's done perfectly. And the best part is I don't even need a plate because I can eat it right off of this uh, spit. Oh man. Wow. This is about perfect. I was on there for a long time, probably an hour, and this is worth it. Wow. 
super tender. It's fully cooked too. I don't even mind mine medium rare, but this is this is cooked all the way through. It's juicy. Steaky goodness. Quad leak. It loses such a, so much of its potency after you grill it, but the taste still stays. Yeah. So you can see, even the part that was completely um, closed in by the stick, got cooked. I'm not ta talking like medium rare or rare. It's cooked just, just as much as the other stuff. Ooh. Yeah, it's, it's more tender, but definitely cooked. So no worries there. Every time, every single time. Next we'll hear the train. In two seconds we'll hear the train. But I, uh, I think I'm in a meat coma. I haven't really done much. It's 8 o'clock now. I ate, ate about 6 o'clock. I'm just kind of sitting here enjoying it. Whenever I go away from the fire for a bit, I had to go walking to find this stick, uh, my support stick. I, I stir up all the mosquitoes, and then they come back with me. So it's like now that I've been sitting here for another good, I don't know, half an hour, they've kind of died off. The smoke gets rid of them and the fire and stuff. But I gotta get some more firewood. I gotta get some more firewood. I want to be able to sit up and relax tonight by the fire. Just kind of, just kind of soak it all in, you know. Just the the woods at night. So if I want to do that, I need a fire going because these mosquitoes are gonna come out in full force pretty soon. So off we go. I'm really liking this little axe I got. So it's, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it before, it's a Sandvik Sweden, and then it says one and a quarter on it. So one and a quarter head on a 20 inch Wetterlings handle, sorry, uh, 20 inch Gransfors handle. I'm liking it a lot. I've been using it for a lot of things today. Way more than my saw, so nice little light, light sharp hatchet, fitting the bill. It's a Mario mushroom, and he looked at his collection of wood and saw that it was good. It's a pretty sweet little tent. Really, the only reason I'm using it is for the bug protection. Uh, if it wasn't midsummer, I'd be sleeping under the tarp like I normally do, but. For what this is, for how much it weighs, for how little it packs down, it's it's perfect to use on on something like this. And um, without the fly, like I've already said, it, it even opens up more possibilities. So you can hang out in there and not be too uh, too sweaty. So I'm not gonna need my sharpener no more. I am going to need my headlamp. So I'm taking that guy out right now, and I'm not going to need my axe, so I might as well hang it back up. Know where it is, everything's good. This goes in my pocket until I need it. I don't want to be running around looking for my headlamp when it's dark, so it's about quarter after eight right now, and you can see behind my head there is a clearing in the clearing. It's still nice and light out there. But in here, I'm losing light quick. So I just want to tidy up, get everything ready before dark so that I know where everything is, get my wood all together. I piled a bunch of punky wood on, on the fire again to get the smoke coming back. Mosquitoes are not too bad right now. I'm hoping that once the sun goes down, it's, it's not going to change. But either way, no big deal. I'm having a lot of fun. Um, I needed this. I need a little bit of a recharge. I hadn't been out in a while uh, on an overnight or so. It's an awesome night out. 
the temperatures dropped a lot there's no humidity mosquitoes have gone away fireflies are out this is killer I just saw an owl it was super cool um, sitting here and there's a loud noise in the leaves over there and it sounded like it was bigger than a squirrel but like not as big as a raccoon or a coyote and uh, I turn on my light over there and I clap my hands and something flies up to the tree and I'm looking at him and he's, he's it has to be an owl I don't know what else it would be a small it's a small owl I think or whatever other kind of bird, bird hunts at night but it was shaped like an owl like small and fat really really cool uh, couldn't get a good look at him obviously because it's dark and I just had my headlamp but it was awesome awesome to see That's it for tonight, guys. I'll see you in the morning. Well, it's right around 7.30. I slept pretty good. I slept from probably about midnight to about 6.30 or so. So that's not too shabby for, for a night in the woods. Normally it takes me a few nights to get on a normal sleeping schedule, but I feel, I feel pretty refreshed. And I'm hungry, so I'm going to make up some oatmeal. We still got some heat in there, so I'm just going to stoke it up. I've got a bunch of sassafras twigs I just picked. Throw right on there. Hopefully with a little bit of fanning. It'll be all good. Mmm. Who am I kidding? It actually is very good. <laughs> I was waiting to eat this oatmeal. It's very filling. Feels good on the tummy tum. The tummy tum. Feels good on the tummy tum. It's gonna be a nice day. And then one night the spiders put a bunch of spider webs right on my tent. I'm pretty cool. Alright, this is all my gear that I brought. Real quick, packing up. I think that this backpack is a good backpack for an overnight or a couple days. If you want to bring enough gear with you to be comfortable, this isn't a survival situation. This is me having fun in the woods. This is me camping. This is me being able to bring everything I want in one backpack while still having that backpack be robust um, as opposed to like a backpacking backpack. So you can see, stuff everything in there. It's all good. I'm happy with the bag. I'm happy I got it. I'm happy Max Expedition sent it to me. I will continue to use it and I'm sure you'll see it in more videos. So. It's about 9 o'clock right now. I'm going to give the wife a call. It takes her almost an hour to get here. It'll be about 10 when she gets here. And that will be just right around 24 hours that I've been out here. So a good test for this pack. It can last you 24 hours out of it real easy. And like I said before, even more if I had a little bit more water and was actually able to catch some fish. All right. Love you too. Right. So that's it for this video, guys. I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.